You want to go back to Godhead? Yes. Okay, how quick? Right now. Right now? Okay, if you stop eating and chant Hare Krishna, you can go back in three weeks. Stop drinking water, you can go back in three days. Stop breathing air, you can go back in three minutes. <laughs> tie your hands up, tie a big piece of cement and jump in the water and it's okay in three minutes, right? You want to go back to God here? <laughs> three minutes? <laughs> well, it will take a little longer, sure. yeah, 30 years. <laughs> now we begin to realize how many attachments we have. Yeah. How many people here are attached to smoking marijuana? Can't give it up, be honest. Okay, how many people here are attached to breathing? Can't give it up, okay, <laughs> no, all right. That's, then after that, you have to give up space, right? Prabhupada says, at the time of death, they erase your face, right? and it will never exist ever again. Right? Yeah, even though it's old, it's still my face. <laughs> Look in the mirror. Think about that. It never, oh, my goodness, yeah. Yeah, so then above space, then there's the mind and the intelligence like that and so on. So we have um, uh, one movie, of course, now is Rat Yatra. You know, it's a very, very important festival, important function in, in Krishna consciousness. You know? um, what is what is the what is Rath Yatra? <laughs> uh, one time, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, I've been talking about this. Bob. Yeah, Jagannath. This no Jagannath. Yeah, Jagannath Das Babaji. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, Jagannath Das Babaji. There's two Babajis there. Right? <laughs> Yeah, Gorky Shore. Gorky Shore Das Babaji. Uh, there was uh, some big landowner was going to have a, uh, a Rathiatra festival, you know, and, and bring, bring professional musicians, all this kind of stuff. And so uh, Jagannath, uh, Gorky Shore Babaji was encouraging everybody, oh, it's going to be a really good festival, and there'll be a lot of girls there dressed in pretty saris, and he's going to have all these ladus, and he's bringing a, a, a two bands from Calcutta, to perform, and there's so many priests he's bringing, you know, paying to bring. It's going to be a wonderful Rath Yatra. You should all go. Everybody should go. So finally, on the day of Rath Yatra, everybody went, and Jagannath and Gorkishore didn't go. <laughs> he st stayed in the village and chanted Hare Krishna. Very peaceful program. Like that. So, so what is Rath Yatra? What is the content? Well, I have uh, 19, let's see, the first Rath Yatra in the Western world, was organized by Srila Prabhupada in San Francisco. And these are the original, original deities that Shama Sundar carved. So very, very old. Um, I've, I've, I've dressed Jagannath o over a thousand times. I fig figured out one time, over a thousand times, dressed him and so on. Balaram is not flat on the bottom. He's a little bit, you know, curved. So he kind of, you know, <laughs> kind of rocks like the, the Varuni, like that, a little bit. Back and forth, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we have a movie, I guess we can show, and Vaisheshik is gonna, Vaisheshik is gonna recognize a lot of people in this movie. This was 1977, the year Prabhupada left his body right after this, and I think Jayananda had left his body before this. Of course, Jayananda is an integral part of the whole Rath Yatra history, and, and so on like that. But anyway, so uh, uh, Charudas, our president, asked me to make the movie, and it's, we made it on Super 8, <laughs> Super 8 camera, if you ever, this is before you were born, maybe, like eight millimeter film. And, and I had it all planned out. And as soon as it started, the, uh, the screw got lost from the tripod, so I, everything else I had to you know, film it holding it like that. And we edited it. So anyway, let's give it a try here. The light, lights don't go down, is it good? The lights should go down a little bit. So it's, it's only like about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Jagannath Swami Kijai. It had a narration. Maybe I'll try and narrate it a little bit as it goes. Oh, I can see back there too. Only in Silicon Valley, sir. Rathi Yatra, 1977. Today, Krishna lifted this hill. Therefore, his name is Grihan. Grihan, who held this hill. So right downtown in San Francisco, and, uh, they have Harini banners. Maybe, so, maybe 40, 50 banners all over the city like this. Many. Jagannath Chariot yeah. Festival, Golden Gate Park, 12 p.m. So we follow that principle because we are 
And we were out in Mark's Meadows, which is way inside the park, very distant inside the park. And we had to build everything. There was no festival of India then. So whatever you see here was built by local devotees. And these carts, uh, Jayananda, of course, was designing the carts. And he made iron wheels. This is devotee Maharshi Das. Maharshi Das. Yeah. All built, everything built there. We were out there for weeks before where Jainan designed them. And so many apples somebody donated. We had apple chutney like for the next three weeks after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah and potatoes, you know, so much cooking. Jagannath Puri, they can cook for 10,000 people. You know, the big refrigerator trucks to transport everything. And Golden Gate Park, Prabhupada said it should be the, uh, it should be the temple for the Bay Area. And it's beautiful flowers. Yeah, it's a wonderful place for all this Krishna conscious activities like that. So this was the day of the Ratha Yatra and Krishna cooperated. Very, very beautiful program. Yeah. And three carts. To Lord Chaitanya, the carts looked as high as Mount Meru yeah, when he saw them. And I think Subhadra's cart is the same one Prabhupada rode on here. But the other two were new. Jayananda built them. The wheels were incredible. They were like 10 feet tall, weighed 4,000 pounds each one or something. You know? Jai. Wow. Well, there's Jiva Das and Subhadra Devi Dasi. Jiva, Jiva was a, a, a bank robber. He, was our, he became our Sankirtan leader. <laughs> there's, there's Balaram, the Tapan, Tapan Acharya Das. You recognize these people? Yeah. Okay, and there's Jagannath. I guess that's top of the Jagannath Swami Ki Jai. With Kritakarma Das in front of him. He was a Cuban fellow. Okay, in motion. See, a big festival, 1977. Maybe the only, I guess it was the only Ratha Yatra in, in North America at this time. Yeah. And he had a Rolls Royce when the, when the Jagannath came from the temple. Okay. Yeah, it's always a little cold. I made the wheel covers. Yeah. They're actually steel, but then you had to get these covers over them like that. So I, I made those. <laughs> yeah. Rolls Royce, Gornatai Mortis. Now we're going into the park. Where we, uh, where we finish off, we were starting there. And it goes into a place called Mark's Meadows, inside, inside like that. Jayananda said when they had the festival in New York, it was like the spiritual sky just opened up. And these carts came out and just kind of bounced down into the street and all these beautiful girls and saris and brahmacharis dancing and screaming. And, People looked at it like it was just something came from another planet or something. You know? It's Vijadatma. <laughs> I was filming all this with eight millimeter camera there. <laughs> no, no tripod. Jai. Is it Subhadra? Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai. Yoga Mai, Guru Kripa! So they came from Japan, Guru Kripa's party, to join the festival. Yeah. There's a picture of Jayananda there? Somewhere there. Satsrup Maharaj! Backside. So beautiful. There's all these garlands. The first time I came home, this Mars Pata Parudra. He came for the, fe <laughs> the festival too. Yeah. 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 Devotees who made the flower garlands have grooves in their fingers afterwards. They were stained by the colors from the flowers like for two days afterwards. Jai Gortai. Wow. 
There's no no Rathi Akra like the San Francisco Rathi <laughs> There's, of course, the news station. We had two elephants. We painted tilak on them, and the paint didn't come off. So the next day, the zookeeper was calling us up, like, there's Lord Brahma, look, Lord Brahma. There's Leo the clown. Yeah, Papa said more and more different events. Yeah. All kinds of different people there. Our Indian community was actually very, very uh, involved in too, but just a few people, not a lot of people, almost all motel owners. Vatsal, <laughs> Vatsal Das, he just moved to the Carolinas about a couple weeks ago. Yeah, actually the uh, Indian community, ah, uh, Baladas, our cook, Agni Dev, as a young man. Rochan Das. Yeah. Paul. the universe. Think the cheapest Rolls Royce you can buy starts at $110,000. Here we have a uh, Scottish bagpipe band they got. They were all, all playing the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra with bagpipes and bagpipes and uh, horns. So now we're going into the park. This is uh, Mark's Meadows. Jai! <laughs> Oh. His eyes are lotus lotus petals. So they came off the cart and put them on very, very nice palaquins and then carried them from the cart on up to the uh, the stage. And again, devotees in San Francisco built everything here. Yeah. Yeah. That's Bhaktabil. <laughs> It's, a, it's way it's way inside the park, but it's a very nice place. It's a natural uh, natural theater. On both sides, there are not little hills like that. This is Vatsa uh, announcing an, 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 announcing everything. Artik with Mahanidhi Swami on the left, Kritakarma Das on the right. Namaste Pankajan Ghai Namaste Banu Swami 
Charu hired a uh, professional advertising girl, Linda Gerson, and gave her two devotees to help him. I made the arch, too. <laughs> and so she knew what she was doing, getting press releases, everything else. And by the time, I think it was like, it paid her like a thousand dollars, but she got what you got, a thousand people to come. You know? Very interesting. And Lord Brahma. Doing, doing the shimmy like that, like that, like that. Yeah. Your Lord, good karma having a conversation with Jagannath. He's a Cuban devotee. Very, very nice. You know. very, yeah, from Cuba. Satsuma Maharaj. What is Rafi Atra? And I think it's Chara. Maharaj is almost 79 years old now. Yeah, that's what he, he gets up about 1 o'clock every morning. Yeah, chanting. Die. Shri Prabhupada Lila Mrita Ki This is Charu Das, he was our president then because he moved to uh, uh, Spanish Fork This is Alice Coltrane Her husband was a very, very famous uh, musician He passed on and they were in, into yoga, whatever So Charu got them to come and uh, she played the harp, so she was a big headliner. Yeah. She brought her group with them. Yani kani cha papani brahma hacha dikani cha tani tani pana shanti pariksana pade pade. I just don't remember it. <laughs> it, was, it moved. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people there with the stage program. Yeah. But now uh, let's go through the arches, not the golden arches. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is looking back through the arches now. So on uh, the other side they had a, a, another stage and a lot of other programs going on. It was a whole entertainment festival. This is now Baudak. Baudak was there from uh, Seattle. Yeah. Very, very famous for their kirtan. And it was, was really good. It was really, you know, whenever you really wanted to chant and dance, there he is. Baudak Kida. Yeah. Very famous kirtan leader. He had an airplane, actually, for the Vancouver farm. They would fly in and out of there. You see, there's a guy over there for. They don't have drums, they have a bass guitar. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Brahmachari Shakti Ki Jai. Okay, Maharaji Loka Ki Jai. Chan Chan Bala. So inside of this, we have a little temple. Yeah, we can build all this. And this okay, this is a little Jagannath from Berkeley, and the Jagannath deity is from uh, Seattle. And as soon as you went inside there, it was just like a totally different atmosphere. Just everything else kind of disappeared. It was just, and people could fan the deities. It was just a whole an unbelievable experience. You know? Kirtan, festival, bagpipes, elephants, chai. <laughs> yeah. 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 These were the first deities that Hridayananda Maharaj worshipped. They were in the, in the temple in uh, Durant Street in Berkeley yeah. and they're on the altar now in the, uh, the temple in uh, Berkeley yeah. in Prasadam Maribo I'll tell you the story of the watermelon <laughs> it's not ordinary watermelon 
Okay, Mahaprasadam. This lady was one of Queen Elizabeth's maidservants. <laughs> she told us that. She was one of Queen Elizabeth's maidservants. She used to come to, come to the temple all the time. Amazing. Hansaluda told us that Prabhupada said, this movement will attract the most sane and the most crazy people. <laughs> And you've got to know how to send them. These are all of us, our Gujarati members, Ishwar, Ishwar Bai, and everybody else. And they get nice, they get nice donations. They're all hotel owners, like that and stuff. You know, and so all these sweets, cooking for weeks beforehand for all the different kinds of sweets there. And stuff. You know, what shall I take? Free feast, sweets. You know. Look at that. Strawberry, vanilla, and uh, carob sandesh. <laughs> yeah. Beat that. The good old days. Yeah. Your material life is finished. You don't know it. But. Ah, there you go. There's a whole purpose. The whole purpose of the whole festival. Yeah. Uh, Lakshmi? What's the name? Shubha Lakshmi? These are all members of Jiva's, Jiva's party. Shiba Lakshmi Devi Dasi. Mother Nada, she was the biggest distributor. And she was going out doing about $1,200 a day. This is back in 1977. With inflation, we're talking about. You know, it would be $3,000 a book a day in book distribution. Yeah, she's still around. Okay. <laughs> the elephant with his, her tea lock. Her tea lock. Linoleum house paint. Yeah. But what, what, what can you want? You can ride on an elephant, you can eat sweets, you can talk to a Scottish bagpipe player. And all the Gujarati ladies, the separate stage, they did this whole Garba dance thing. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Such an experience. Yeah. It's like we say, an unforgettable experience. And because everybody's doing it for Krishna, it's not just operating on the sensuous level. You know? It's operating uh, you know, on, the, on, the heart, on the internal level. Nobody, not a, nobody here was paid, even Alice Coltrane, they, we paid her ticket, air ticket. You know? but nobody, everybody here did everything for free. Yeah? Yeah. Nah, okay, Jagannath's gone back to the temple. You know? And we're alone. Well, no, Gorontai is still there. Harinam Sankrita. <laughs> so it's the end of the festival. Never stops. Keep on going all day. Hard work in the sun. Exhausted, but just the spiritual energy is unbelievable. You know? And who's chanting? Who's, who's making all these people ecstatic in love of God? There's Leo. <laughs> okay. Lord Brahma, I guess, is also gone. Sukadev! Yeah. As it go, you ate, your bellies are full, <laughs> get up and chant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, sadder but wiser, <laughs> the Rathayantra festival finally comes to an end. Okay. And Lord Chaitanya is looking up <laughs> and taking us all to the spiritual world. And, uh, okay, yeah, there it is. Okay. Shishi Jagannath Rathi Yatra Ki. This is the 50th anniversary, no? 50 years, 50 years. Hey, the lights on there? The lights, yeah. yeah. So it's a very wonderful festival. There's so many things. One of our, uh, you remember Kaili Lalita? Her, she had, her face was burned and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a very interesting person. Uh, somebody got, gave her a flyer, she got invited, Indian festival, tiger, <laughs> lion, whatever. So she came to Golden Gate Park with her husband, and they went all around, they saw, you know, festival, kirtan, everything else, and somebody sold her a Bhagavad Gita. And uh, she went home and she, she, read, she, read, she said she read about maybe like, you know, 10 pages from the Bhagavad Gita, and then put it on her bookshelf, and she said probably she never would have read it, you know, the rest of her life or something like that. So next day they were going, uh, her and her husband were going from San Francisco to Santa Cruz. And of course that mountain, you know, that road is one of the most dangerous roads in the place. She was driving in a Volkswagen Beagle, Beetle, and the steering wheel came off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whole thing flipped over, smashed everything else, gas everywhere. So she got out, 
and the, her clothes were catching on fire, and her husband was burning to death in there, and she couldn't get him out, he was disoriented. So she lost consciousness listening to her husband scream as he burned to death in front of her. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, she told me the whole thing. So she uh, came back to consciousness in the hospital, and the first thing she was conscious of was the smell of cooked meat. Yeah. And then she realized who the cooked meat was. Yeah. And then she said the first thought that came through her head was, Oh, Krishna, <laughs> if I am this body, I'm going to go crazy. You know? So she, she, she was burned, her body and stuff. It, was, it wasn't enough to make people like little children scream in terror or something, but you know, it wasn't, wasn't nice. And so, you know, she, she started going to the temple and devotees didn't care so much, you know, it was, it was actually a fact. Devotees, they look at you more than just the body and stuff. So she got involved and uh, then she distributed, you know, thousands of books, hundreds and lost so many books. And she collected, you know, maybe four times what the whole Rathiatra cost. So, so with our effort, and then she's going to escape, but Krishna says, no way, you're not escaping. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. If I have to bur half burn you up or whatever it is, I'm going to get you back to God yeah, like that. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the whole festival was a success because one person became a devotee. Yeah, economically, spiritually, everything else like that, and so on. Yeah, and that's maybe, maybe what it takes. <laughs> All of us working, and Krishna himself getting near the end to say, "Step back! This is not going to work." <laughs> yeah. Seven number seven ball in the in the green pocket. <laughs> you know, blah 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 blah. You know, so she said she had no choice. It was just you know, forced. You know, like that. You know, yeah, but but at the same time too, she never felt bitter or anything. You know, she went on with her life, adjusting it in terms of her situation like that. But, but it's an example that this Rathiatra is going on on many different levels. You know. One level, it's a very nice external festival and people are attracted and they come and look at it. You know. uh, another, another level, what is, what is it? Uh, it's it's the, uh, what, you know, the reenactment of Krishna going back to Vrindavan and the Lord Chaitanya no, I lost his kirtan. Prabhupada, when he was inaugurating one of the first festivals, he was in the back of the cart, and three television stations were there recording it. And he gave a very nice little address about the festival. And he said, so, all of you people of San Francisco, come and join the devotees once a year, and chanting and dancing an emotional love of God, and your whole city will become Vaikuntha. <laughs> so such a, an offer. An offer, yeah. So it's that level too. It's just a kirtan festival, chanting, dancing, and that's above just like an Indian festival, and you get an experience. Prabhupada says an ordinary person comes to a big kirtan program, and he'll feel something. The Paramatma will make him feel something. Goranga bolite habe pulaka saril. He'll just chant, and you know you won't know why exactly and stuff, but you but you experienced it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have to go again. Then the next level is where it's becoming this esoteric adve adventure of, of, Lord, of Lord Chaitanya at Rath Yatra. Um, many of the pujaris for Lord Jagannath, as I understand, come from Shankara Sampradaya, and they have many different ideas about who Jagannath is, you know, you know, so on. So we're looking, you know, Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra, and, you know, Jagannath, uh, the whole story, you know the story, you know, that there's a solar eclipse, solar eclipse, and all the uh, Kurus, not the Kurus, Kurus, yeah, but also the Yad Yadus, they all go to Kurukshetra, Kurukshetra, to observe the, uh, the solar eclipse at an auspicious place and give charity and all these things. So Krishna has gone to Dwarka, right? And all the Brisbasis can't see him, he's so far away. But now he's going to be just for the solar eclipse in Kurukshetra, which is not very far at all from Vrindavan, yeah? And so they decide they're going to go. So Nanda Maharaj puts his best cowboy boots on and you know, kind of cleans off the cow dung and <laughs> goes out and washes out the back of the pickup truck. And, you know, <laughs> and then they, they get some milk sweets and some burfi and some razagulas and you know, all this kind of stuff. And they all head off like that you know, <laughs> to, uh, to Kurukshetra. You know? But when they get there, oh my God, it's, you know, they're, they're looking, you know, there's Krishna with a Rolex wristwatch, a Halliburton briefcase, Gucci shoes, you know, and, and the, the, the gopis are looking at these princesses, and they're, they're all educated girls. The, 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 princess, the princesses in Dwarka 
the gopis were saying, can do crossword puzzles. <laughs> the gopis couldn't even read and write. Of course, some of them, Induleka, you know, uh, Chitraleka means they can read and write, but many of them couldn't. Prabhupada said, uh, he said, he said, Nanda Maharaj could not read or write. He, he would hire some educated fool, educated fool to do it for him. So, software engineer, right? <laughs> yeah, right? The guy is paying you, you know, something, $60,000 a year, and he's making $100,000, $80,000 off your work, you know? So Nanda Maharaj is a Vaisha, you know, yeah. So, Prabhupada says, what to speak of the Garls, <laughs> the Garls, you know? But, he said, they knew everything because they would go to the lectures given by the learned Brahmanas who were taking Bhakti by Bhava and Bhakti Vedanta courses, like that. <laughs> and then organizing puppet shows and these kind of things. And so the common people could understand everything, you know? And in their own way, and even better than the Brahmanas. The Brahmanas would be very logical, and they could put it in that sense, you know, intellectual sense, you know? So, the gopis and the Brijabhasis are all thinking, oh my goodness, we were going to invite Krishna coming back to Vrindavan, but why should he want to go? He's surrounded by big military generals. Jayananda told us that one time in the, what's the one? Um, it was, not, where's that one? No, the original, original temple was at 84 Carl Street? The first temple, 84 Carl Street, right? Where it was, yeah, okay. Yeah. Anyway, it was Haida hey Ashbury, and it was, it was the whole temple was, I guess, about the size of the altar space or something. It wasn't very big, and they had Jagannath up there, and they asked uh, Prabhupada if they could dress him, and the Prabhupada said he's already dressed like that. But if you want to, you can dress him. You know. So the devotees got like uh, Christmas tree lights that go green, blue, yellow, red, and hung them, hung them on the altar, and Lord Jagannath had these different colors, right? So when the lights changed color, then his his body. Had, <laughs> thing was so the hippies would come in on LSD and just sit there like, you know, you know, watching Lord Jagannath <laughs> changing colors and stuff, you know. <laughs> like, hey, yeah. So one day, Jayananda told us, Sunday feast, somebody asked, you know, Srila Prabhupada, right, um, what does Lord Jagannath look like when you become self-realized? So Prabhupada looked at Lord Jagannath, you know, look at Balaram, he's wearing a, a blue shirt, he has a... Uh, Couple of horizontal stripes there. He has a really good looking mustache, like that. <laughs> like that. Yeah, but it's the same thing. I'm just describing what I'm seeing kind of tan colored pants, you know. So Prop, John understood, probably looked up and said, Oh, you'll see a prince at Kurukshetra surrounded by elephants and ministers. And he was just you know, describing what he was seeing. You know? The devotees were, nobody else saw it, you know. Yeah. So Jagannath is coming to Rathiatra. And all the British bosses are thinking, oh, we're going to invite him back. Hey, would you like some burfi? <laughs> it's like, it's like, I feel very intimidated by all these big, powerful ministers and the secretaries and the queens and the, all these people, you know. They think, well, maybe if, if Radha, Radharani, maybe if she invites him, he'll come, you know. So then we get the prayers of Lord Chaitanya in the mood of Radharani at, at that chapter. And, uh, I think maybe one of the most beautiful things in all of Prabhupada's books is that chapter and stuff. The Bengali alone is just unbelievable. You haven't got to know anything, just hearing to it. Anya Desha, Anya Vesh, Anya Sangha, Anya Vesh. It's, just, it's the alliteration and the poetry is so beautiful and that stuff. You know? So Radharani starts like uh, talking to Krishna and uh, trying to ins inspire his Braja Bhava, his Braja Bhava. Because there you see in the mood of Vasudev, you know, the portion of Krishna, he's God, you know, this kind of thing. You know, and Balaram is Shankar. So she's trying to inspire this feelings for, for Vrindavan like that. And she goes on, you know, talking about, talking about different things. And, you know, have you, do, you, do you think of Nanda Maharaj? Do you think of this? And you're here. And the Brisbasis, you know, they, you say you're coming back, right? But you're not coming back, you know. So the British bosses, they, 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 they can't live without you. Just can't do it. The grass in Vrindavan was, was all dying because of the, the fire of separation. The only thing that was keeping it alive was the tears of the gopis. <laughs> That's what's a very <laughs> incredible situation. So she tells them, so either tell us you know, one or the other. You're going to come back, okay, and will, will we be happy? Or tell us you're not going to come back and we can die. <laughs> Yeah, but don't keep the Brijabhasis alive in this half and a half state like that and so on. 
Now, so he goes on like this. I can remember other things she was saying. And uh, she says, as far as I'm concerned, I don't really think about myself at all. I think about all, everybody else in Vrindavan. I think about Govardhan. I think about the forest, the Jamuna, your friends, the cows, you know, and stuff. As far as myself, I just must have done something very, very evil in my last lifetime. And so I'm, I'm in separation from you. That's just my own bad fortune. But when I look at the face of your mother, Krishna, think of your poor mother, Krishna. <laughs> like that. She, rah, like that. What kind of boy are you? Very, you know, Radharani knows how to, you know, you know, put put the screws to it. You know, then I my my heart breaks to see your mother. You showed it. Okay. So anyway, she finishes off like that. Then Krishna says, um, you know, I, I you know I, I want to come back, you know, but I can't because if I do come back, all these demons will follow me and disturb everything. Every day I worship Lord Narayan to keep you alive. You don't know how much I suffer in separation from you. All these opulences, all these wives and kingdoms and all these things, I simply do to satisfy the yadus. Personally, I take almost no satisfaction in it. You know, you know. So I have a few more demons to kill. kill. Uh, uh, you don't know it, but every day I come and do pastimes with you. Right? Krishna is very cruel, right? He left Vrindavan, you know, took his gig, he took his association away from the Brisbasis. Is that what, hap what happened? When he came to the uh, Kuragat, right? Did he, did he, what happened? Did Krishna go to, did Krishna go to Mathura? Who went to, who went to Mathura? His Vasudev portion, yeah, and the Shankarshan portion. And his, geographically, we do these things looking all over the world, there's this manifestation of the cult of Vasudeva and Sankarshan. All over the world, the cult of Vasudeva and Sankarshan. In different places, you find this. You know. And that's how Krishna and Balaram were known in Dwarka. You know. So people knew about them. They were famous. There's something remnants of this cult, cult there. So when Krishna uh, there, he stayed in Vrindavan. But in what form? In what form did he stay in Vrindavan? For 20 points. <laughs> huh? No, no, no. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Leela, Shmarna, Swarup. Yeah. His own form in the form of recollecting his pastimes. Yeah. That was something more intimate and more intimate than the form he'd given to the Brisbasis before that. He was giving them something even more intimate. So, when you, for example, when you're reading. Jayananda told us, the Prabhupada said, just go on chanting Hare Krishna and you'll see pastimes you never read in any of my books. Yeah. One time in Los Angeles they had the kidnapping of Rukmini and uh, they came to the point where Krishna takes Rukmini on the chariot Then Prabhupada just stood up. He was watching the whole thing. He stood up and he said, and she wasn't a timid girl. <laughs> she, she grabbed the reins of the horses and was driving the thing so her husband could shoot at these rascals and stuff like that, you know. This is the kind of girl you're getting, you know. <laughs> so, but that's not in the Krishna book at all. You know, but Prabhupada was, again was describing it like you know, as the way it was. You know? yeah. So this lila, shmarna swarup is a form of recollecting, mem uh, record, remember, recollecting, contemplating these pastimes. The basic stimulations there in the Krishna book. So many things, right? And by doing that, they're alive. They're alive. And so many things start to fill in, and so many things you understand, and you find it confirmed. Confir some little thing confirming it later on. Yeah? So it's a very living thing, very living thing. Yeah? So Krishna gave them that. But, but of course, feelings of separation are a part of the whole thing like that. Yeah? So that's the whole Rathayatra festival. You know? Just by pulling the cart, we're trying to go from the Aishwarya Bhava of Jagannath Puri, where everybody worships God with all this opulence and everything else. <clears throat> uh, I know he was in, he went to India one time. Jayananda with Bhaktadas, you know, and he was describing like you know these South Indian temples where they have it's time for the Arctic and everybody's running to the temple and there's you know hundreds of fat Brahmins sweating ghee, you know, chanting chanting mantras, Om Tadrishno Paramam Saram Sarapashanti, you know. They've been chanting since they're four, four years old, total rhythm, everything else, and just tossing, you know, spices and everything into the blazing fire, and just, you know, Sriman Narayan, like that. <laughs> Opulence, you know. This is Aishwarya Bhava. 
Do you know Prabodhananda Saraswati? For 30 points. <laughs> Who is Prabodhananda Saraswati? He's Venkatabhata's brother. Who's Venkatabhata? Venkatabhata. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And Lord Chaitanya was staying at their, their house, you know. So, uh, you know, Venkatabhata, no, uh, Prabodhananda Saraswati became, you know, Gaudiya, Gaudiya Vaishnava. And he wrote, uh, was it Chaitanya? Ch Chaitanya Chandrika? Huh? Yeah, Chaitanya Chandamrita, I think. But he also wrote uh, Vrindavan Dhamma Himamrita, which is about, I don't know, 13 or 14 shatakas. Jayom, Vishnupad, Paramahamsa, Parivajakatari, Ashtotara Shata, 8-100. A shataka is 100 verses. But there's like 13 of them or something. And they're all about the glories of Vrindavan Dham. The glories of Vrindavan Dham. Vrindavan Dham, Ahimamrita. So in Gauralila, he's Prabodhananda Saraswati, very high class, you know, South Indian Brahmin, like that, pure. But in Chaitanya, in Krishna Lila, he is Tunga Vidya. Tunga means peak, you know, on the far, Krishna's far left, like that. And if Krishna is like, you know, 15 minutes late for Radharani's birthday party, you know, Lalita has no mercy. She's like that, like that, lover boy. I mean, she's just like you know, where she didn't exist, so she takes after you. Radharani has been waiting for 15 minutes, wonder if you're going to come. So Lalita has this whole aggressive attitude towards Krishna and everything else. And Tunga, Tunga Vidya will be there, Lalita, give him a chance. He's probably got a good explanation. No way. <laughs> no, no, no excuse on earth is possible. You know? So Tunga Vidya has this different humor. And it's all Radharani's humors. You know, she blows herself up into eight different gopis, just to, like that. You know? But um, we don't mention Tunga Vidya too much or Prabodhananda Saraswati too much. Although in his commentary on uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says, there was never any argument between Rupa Goswami and Prabodhananda Saraswati, but some low class followers created this artificial dispute, like that and stuff. And sometimes we see him quoted with very all great respect. But we're followers of Rupa Goswami who is the principal Manjari serving Lalita. Okay, so maybe something about humor there, you know, but a uh, different humor. But, you know, very, very beautiful, wonderful poetry, everything else. You know, one of the, for me, one of the most important, best books is Vrindavan Dhamma Himamrita. It's incredible. Kushikata's translation, you know, incredible. So, uh, from Bodhananda Saraswati said, there's, there's a phrase, Vanchito Shmi, you know what that means? I was cheated, you know, vanchito shmi. So he said, I was raised up in the opulent worship of Lakshmi and Narayan with all this grandeur and wealth and respect and everything else and fear, you know. And meanwhile, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas were drowning in Madhurya Ras. Vanchito shmi, vanchito shmi, vanchito shmi. I was cheated, I was cheated, I was cheated. <laughs> so he became Gaudiya Vaishnava here, yeah. Were you baptized as a Christian brother? You weren't, I was. <laughs> but Prabhupada reinitiated, you know, right? Prabhupada gave reinitiation to all these people, so many Christians and stuff. Yeah, because, yeah, we found, we found, actually found the continuation of Christianity, the real internal essence of the whole thing. Nothing lost, you know? So this is the whole, you know, mood, the esoteric, esoteric mood of Ratha Yatra, yeah? And the, some of the little, few experiences with it, with different devotees, how it's, Changed their lives. I know the first time. First time I went, I was first time I came. I was coming to the temple in San Francisco. I got a book. I think Budi Manta sold it to me. It was volume two of the uh, Krishna books. He had two volumes. You know? He sold it to me for ten dollars, and my wife was glaring at me. You know, yeah, don't, don't waste our money. I really had to make this decision between like, you know, Matt Maya or the book. <laughs> I really had to make this choice because I knew when I got home, boy, she was like. <laughs> No mercy, you know. I said, no, it's the right thing. I should do it, you know. It's, so I got the Krishna book. I read it for one year. So many unusual experiences with that book, you know. You know? I read science fiction before that, you know, different science fiction stories. And okay, I was most, some ways the most intellectual people you could come across. They were talking about different things. Clifford Simic. And so anyway, uh, but this, this book had all these outrageous things in it. The Krishna book 
you know, Jarasandha attacked Mathura, then Krishna came out and chopped everybody's heads off and arms off and legs off, and there was an ocean of blood, and you know, the elephants were islands, and the heads were tortoises, and you know, then Balaram was, couldn't control himself, so he came out and doubled the whole thing, you know. Yeah. Anybody who reads this story will never be, you know, bothered by so-and-so, you know. And, and, the, and Prabhupada was so impressed because Prabhupada took every philosophy I'd come across, right, and just talked about it and put us all in a very rational position about what is life and all these things. So it was such a very clear explanation of all these different cultures and philosophies and ideas. And so obviously the person was the same person, you know. And then, but he was, he was coming across that all these stories were true and everything else. It was just like, this is incredible. Just, so at some point my mind said, this is either the biggest lie I've ever come across or it's the absolute truth, okay? <laughs> then my intelligence said to my mind, if it's an absolute lie or an absolute truth, in either case, it's absolute. <laughs> yeah, that was it. The absolute truth is self-evident, right? And I was—I just realized in some way, yeah, this is this this is it. <laughs> yeah, but you make a little island, right? Brahmande Brahmate Kom Bhagyavan Jeev Kuru Krishna Prasadi Paya Bhakti Lata Bij. I mean, you got one little island there. And you've got to protect that, you've got to nurture it, you've got to let it grow. And maybe you get a couple of those, you know, and they grow until they connect up, you know, so on, you know. So I had that experience, and then I had different experiences. Then came to the temple in San Francisco eventually, and you know, after reading the book for maybe one, that would really help. I read the book for one year before I came to the temple and got involved in ISKCON. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I knock on the door, maybe at 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon or 2 o'clock, and some Brahmin tries to say, we're closed, go away. <laughs> like that. <laughs> 450 by Valencia Street. And I was risking my life and everything else to become a devotee, kind of. So I sat in, went out back, sat in the car and opened my Krishna book up. And, right, and Prabhupada said, if anybody has any difficulty in advancing in spiritual life, he should not be too disturbed and be patient. <laughs> and the guy said, come back at 4 o'clock. So I came back at 4 o'clock and when Brahmacharya then, eventually Kesho Bharati, you know, was all... Uh, you know, there and they, they they preached to me and talked to me and I, I reciprocated. I bought three books and the Brahmacharya was like, yeah, well, happy program. Yeah, yeah. So after some time, I kept coming from Sacramento, like you know, an hour and a half drive and stuff, and just oh, such austerity in many ways. And I sat down at lunch one time. I was there and this guy sat down next to me. He had a, a belt for his pants and his coat and took out the back. You know. He said, "Hey, what's your name?" You know, "Oh, my name's uh, Huber." He said, "Oh, yeah, where are you from?" <laughs> Jayananda. Jayananda, immediately you felt like comfortable with him and just, you know, okay. He said, oh, you're from Sacramento. He said, we're having this big festival and I usually go up here and put up posters and I can't do it this year. Can you take a couple up for me and I'll give you some places to do it. Oh, I can do that. Okay, here's 150 posters and here's a list of every single (laughs) headshot. Oh, okay. So, like that, you know. Okay. Welcome to Jayananda, the world of Jayananda. So, Jayananda, as soon as you came in contact with him, right? You had, you had to become Krishna conscious like that. Yeah. One time some Mexican guys came in to fix our, our cooler, like that. Yeah. And they were working on it and Jayananda started talking to them and he's making friendship with them and talking about the, what kind of... They tried, yeah, I tried to fix it. He was a mechanical engineer. Couldn't quite figure it out. You guys know more than I. And with just a few minutes they were talking about their personal lives and their experiences and what are you doing and stuff, you know. So in the end they wanted something like, you know, $40 or something, which now would be like $120 for the few minutes' work. And he said, okay, yeah, well, we're glad to give it to you, but you know, we're at church and it's really tough and stuff. And the guy said, okay, all right, you know, $10 for the parts, you know, like that. Another time, Jayananda hated to spend money, right? Krishna's money for anything. So one story is that his pants, his pants, he would wear his pants to the point where they were, for ladies to have to look the other way almost, like holes in the back. <laughs> so, you know, he was looking like that, you know. So anyway, his pants were getting to the point where he just couldn't wear them anymore, you know. So he stole a pair of pants from some store like that, and they caught him. So he had to go to the court, and there was a judge and the district attorney, and he started explaining to the judge like what was going on and how he was a Hare Krishna devotee, and he just really felt bad about taking money from the church and the donations and everything else. And so finally, the judge said, "Well, I can, I, I can see what you mean and stuff like that and so on, but but you, you broke the law, and so I, I, I got to charge you at least like you know twenty dollar fine, again sixty, you know." And Jayananda said, "Well, I got it's like a dollar and you know ten dollars and forty cents or something." Like that, you know? So, so the judge pulled out like five dollars. The district attorney pulled out five dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and they said, "Look, if you ever ha- ever need another pair of pants, just come and talk to us about it." You know? 
So, so, so he heard Prabhupada wanted the festival, right? The festival, and so he was a mechanical engineer, and so he, he built the first carts, and they were just incredible, like how they worked and stuff. He got all this different stuff in different places. The one story, especially very uh, prominent about him, uh, in, the, in the, San, the San Francisco produce market, it's one of, one of the, you know, the biggest in the world because it's all these tourist, tourist places and you know, hotels and everything else. So it goes blocks, you know, several blocks and stuff. So there's one guy there, he was an importer of bananas. You know, these bananas are coming, gigantic shiploads of bananas. And his name was Banana King Louie. Banana King Louie. And behind his desk, he had this big picture of his face like that. And it said, do not ask what, you, what Banana King Louie can do for you but ask what you can do for Banana King Louis. <laughs> that was, right? that was Kennedy, John F. Kennedy's thing about America and stuff, you know? So anyway, Giannata went in and preached to him and got Louis to donate like 20 boxes of bananas for free. Yeah. And all over the entire produce market, well, Louis's gone, ban Louis's gone bananas, he's giving, giving a donation to the Hare Krishnas. It was, you know, the whole thing was, place was just like, you know, bubbling in Krishna consciousness that, you know, what, what have they done? They talked to this guy like that, you know? So anyway, he went on, he went in a few years like that. Then, of course, finally then Jayananda, uh, it was very interesting, he got leukemia like that and left his body. And the devotees went in the year, year afterwards, like, you know, to try and get the donation of bananas. And he said, where's Jay? When Jay, he said, oh, he like left his body, he had leukemia and stuff. And Banana King Louis started crying. <laughs> he said, such a nice person, you know. So you don't have to know intellectually or anything else. Something is touching your heart which will cause the intellectual investigation later on. It's a real change of heart. It's the bhava. The bhava we're trying to communicate, you know? Yeah. So, I have this, uh, now, let us now speculate. <laughs> I'm, one of the, I'm considered one of the greatest speculators in ISKCON. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We have, uh, uh, one, one time, one time I tried, every, 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 did you ever try and be more humble than Jayananda? No, I did. <laughs> Yeah, Bhaktadas would have some milk sweets right after the. We, we have Mangala Arctic in the temple of Valencia Street. Then you give everybody, you go outside in the lobby, a little place, and we get some milk sweets. Okay, you know. So, John Anda would, anything there was to do, like, he would always do it before anybody else. Oh, don't worry, I'll do it, I'll take care of it, that kind of stuff. You know, he was always the most humble. One devotee joined, Bhakta Leroy, and after like about three weeks, he was going out, distributing a lot of books, making a lot of money, and his ego was, <laughs> was going up, you know, like that. So we were in the big garage there, and Jayananda was there, and Kritakara, myself, Bhaktadas. And then Jayananda said to Bhakta Leroy, he said, you know, Bhakta Leroy, I've been a devotee for, for like three weeks, and you've only been here like maybe you know, five, you know, for three years, five years, or whatever it is, seven years. And you've only been here for like for a few months, and you're already so much more advanced than I am. What's your secret? Come on, you've got to tell me. <laughs> and Bhakta Leroy's ego just <laughs> like that, like that, like that. Because Jayananda meant it. He was actually seeing things like that. It was his humility wasn't like this. We, I, we put it on because it's a, good, it's a good profile, you know, like that. But him. So anyway, a little bit of sweet rice drop on the floor. And it, we, Jayananda and I were both going to go down and wipe it up. And we, then we used to wipe this stuff up and lick it up, you know. If, if a cup of sweet rice, sweet rice is knocked, knocked over in the Sunday feast, all the devotees would be there sucking it up off the floor like that. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the guests would come and, you know, look like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we're going to wipe it up and take it. So it got a little tense. There was a little pressure there to get there first, you know. And so it, my, my mind rebelled, like, why are you forcing me to be humble? You know, <laughs> you're forcing me to be humble. And Jayananda beat me and kind of wiped it up and said, oh, this is too degraded a job for someone like you, Hanuman, you know, and stuff. But it was like this, this kind of hole opened up in the floor, and there was like no bottom in it. It was just like we're just looking at this thing, you know, so on. So and that was like... I was actually really under pressure seeing how humble Jayananda actually was. You know, I was already started, already, already this stuff. My, my humble humility was already starting to fall apart. But his I couldn't even see like the limit. So that's the last time we ever tried to be more humble than Jayananda. <laughs> so, okay. So, okay. When, when is the celebration for his disappearance day? The celebration, the anniversary of the celebration for his disappearance day is the day before... Lord Nishingadeva's appearance day. Okay. Uh, Thakur Haridas is an incarnation of Prahlad Maharaj. Okay, yeah. 
uh, Thakur Haridas couldn't hang around to see Lord Chaitanya's disappearance. Yeah, right? Yeah. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jayananda couldn't hang around either to see Prabhupada's disappearance, you know, same way. So you see what I'm getting at? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I could, speculation. You know, yeah. would, you, would, you, would you say it's impossible that Jayananda was an incarnation of Prahlad Maharaj? <laughs> yeah, that's my speculation. These are the kind of things, okay, so you can speculate and stuff and look for information like that and stuff. This is bona fide, yeah. So we ask it because you don't. Prabhupada said one time. They say they say Prabhupada said you don't know who you're dealing with in this movement, the kind of people like that and stuff. You know, even now people are joining. There's people people come right away. Previous lifetime, they're attracted, they're active and stuff. In those days when Prabhupada was there, it was just you know the most unusual people. We were at the uh, Prabhupada's samadhi. I guess it was disappearance festival in Mayapur, maybe like about six years ago. And John Nivas was there, I think, and uh, Bhavananda, and maybe different people. And one thing, started, one theme started coming up. They're talking about it. And Bhavananda said he went with some actors to the old temple at La, C- La Cienega or whatever it was in Los Angeles. And they wanted to in- investigate something, you know, at the temple about something, some movie they were doing. One director and four or five actors. <clears throat> so they met the devotees. They talked. And the director said, okay, it's time to go now, Bruce, or whatever it is, you know. And he said, he said well, you know, you go, I, I have to stay. <laughs> it was like this, this feeling got him, you know. I can't, you know. Then uh, I think it was John Nevas who said that Panchangri had met Prabhupada, these twin, twin brothers in Mayapur, twin brothers. And he said, oh, you've got to meet this guy. He's really incredible. So I think it was John Nevas went there. And he was listening to Prabhupada talking, and Prabhupada was talking about the Krishna consciousness movement and how it's going to expand and it's going to go all over the world and all these things are going to happen. And he said that he thought Prabhupada was joking, you know, joking. And he was waiting for the point where you come to the punchline, you know, everybody laughs, you know, he was listening like that. But then he said he, he realized that Prabhupada wasn't joking, <laughs> you know. Then he thought, this man is completely mad, right? And then he thought, and I'm going to help him. <laughs> <laughs> this realization came, yeah, yeah. So many times you occur. Doesn't this is the mode of passion? This is the mode of ignorance. This is the mode of goodness in the heart. And these these things change, and your whole life changes like that and stuff. You know, deep down. Yeah. So, so many people. Another one was uh, Shirag. You know him, a karate guy, kung fu guy. He was a complete. Told me he was a complete basket case. You know, completely. Uh, so Prabhupada was staying someplace in one house, and the house next to it was the kitchen, and, and this, the lady said, you know, uh, Robert, can you just take uh, Shri Papa's lunch to him? There's nobody else here, and as a lady, I don't want to go in like a sannyasi. He, he, he kind of said, oh, yeah, okay, you know. So she put the pl- tray in his hand, opened the door, and he was walking in, just, just kind of trying to, like, like, balance it. You know, that was all he could do at that point, just barely walk and not spill it. And he said, Prabhupada looked at him, he looked at Prabhupada, and immediately Prabhupada understood what was happening. This guy is, you know, so Prabhupada was kind of like with him, like directing him and, and <laughs> stuff. They both were moving it across the floor. And finally, he got it on the table, and he and Prabhupada both went, wow, okay. <laughs> and he was going to leave, and Prabhupada said, no, sit here, stay here, you know. So he was taking for lunch, and Prabhupada was talking to him and everything else, you know. But he was a total basket case. He said the next day he was in the kitchen washing, and his mind was just going crazy, just you know, washing pots and criticizing everybody, and so crazy and so angry, like it always was. Then Prabhupada's voice appeared in his mind and said, "Stop this!" And his mind, <laughs> his mind, his tail went down. He said, "Never happened ever again." That one thing is stop it like that, you know. And now he's like a uh, you know kung fu martial arts guy with you know 457 Magnum, everything else. I saw him uh, when we were in Dallas Temple <clears throat> some time ago. We were going to Brahma Ashram to take rest, and he was going into the, in there. he had his like 754 Magnum, his nunchucks, his you know, you know, knife, everything else, you know. And I said, what's, what's going on? He said, oh, someone's been sneaking in the kitchen sometimes and stealing boga at night, and I'm going to catch him, you know. Okay. So I came out the next morning to go into the temple room, but right before Mangal Arctic, and he was coming out, you know. And I said, well, did you catch him? And he said, I was up all night, and I was sitting in the hallway. I finally sat down on the bench, and I heard noise in the kitchen, like that I knew, okay, the guy's there. Then he came around the corner, and I knew I was outgunned. <laughs> I 
<laughs> it's his 457 Magnum, his killer knife, all this stuff. Somebody came here, the thief came around the corner, and you'll see, I knew I was outgunned. <laughs> it was a skunk. <laughs> Whether you shoot the skunk or the skunk shoots you, it's all the same for you. Yeah. She said he just kind of froze and he went by me under my seat and I ran out like that and stuff. And they found a hole where he was coming in like that and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Brahmandi Brahmatekon, Bhagavan uh, Bhagavan Ji, Guru Prasishya Kha, Guru Krishna Prasadya Pai Bhakti Lada Bij. One moment's association like that. Yeah. So this is kind of a little discussion of Rathyatra and all the people involved in it. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to take Krishna from this Aishwarya Bhava to the, the mood of spontaneous love of Vrindavan. There's one verse that's nice to memorize, Mai Bhakti Hi Bhutanam Amritat Vayakalpate I don't can't remember it. Like, Madishna. It's right in the Rathyatra section. Mai Bhakti Hi Bhutanam Amritat Vayakalpate Yeah. Yeah. Krishna tells the gopis after all this, it's in Chaitanya Nishimha Bhagavatam, he tells them, uh, any, mai, mai, mai bhakti hi bhutanam. Anybody who does my bhakti, amritatvaya kalpate, he goes to amrita, he goes to Vaikuntha. Yeah? One Christian preacher says, you come to church every Sunday, you listen to the same sermon, you hear the same preacher, you sing the same hymns. You sit in the same place. It smells like you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that's it. We can do that. Every Sunday, come to the Sunday feast, everything else. Go to follow the rules and regulations. You'll go to Vaikuntha. You'll go to Amrita. He says, but you, gopis, have developed a different kind of love for me. Yeah? And that's the only reason for my coming back to you. Yeah. So if we can catch the spontaneous love, we can catch something very special in our service in Krishna. Verses there? Yeah. It's uh, 108244. 108244. Okay. Yeah. Get the, is it there? The Sanskrit? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mai bhaktir hibhutanam amritat vaya kulpate tishya yad asin matsneho. Bhavatinam Madapanaha. Okay. Rendering devotional service to me qualifies any living being for eternal life. But by your good fortune, you have developed a special loving attitude toward me by which you have obtained me. Yeah. So whatever spontaneous feelings we have is by our good fortune, by his divine mercy of his divine grace. Yeah. And try and cultivate those. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll die and we'll go to Vaikuntha. Right? One devotee died and went to Vaikuntha and there was a very ugly deity of Krishna there. And he said, who are you? And he said, I am... <laughs> yeah. And, and you've been chanting my name all your life. And so now you must stay with me forever. <laughs> so what do we want to get out of the Ratha Yatra festival? Yeah, what do you want to get out of it? Yeah, what are, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice pretty girls, <laughs> nice food, three kind of sand dash, yeah, yeah. So very nice to read these prayers by Lord Chaitanya. The Jagannath Astaka, right, everybody usually is reading that before, singing that every day before Shnani Yatra. You know, such, such a whole culture. You know, I, I probably said, nobody can take everything the spiritual master is offering. When I heard that, it was like, with well, relief, God, it's like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can't do it. Is you, you've got to catch your aspect of relationship with Prabhupada and hang on like that, you know, so on. And then you, then you, you know the whole thing. You've got to hold the tail of the elephant. You know what's happening every place else and so on. But you've got your position. Lord Chaitanya is going higher and higher with Ramananda Roy. And finally they come to Bridge Basi, you know, uh, Baba. And Ramananda Roy says, from Tatastasta. From a neutral position, you can see there's hierarchies. This is higher than that, you know, so on. But he said, who's in Tatastasta? <laughs> Everybody's in their position. So what's, what's the, which is better? The, the, who has more love for Krishna, the cowherd boys or the gopis? That's because all your acharyas are gopis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who has more love for Krishna, Mother Yashoda or Radharani? Yeah, carry on this argument with somebody from Pustimar and see how far you get. <laughs> 
they'll come up with some pretty telling verses from the Bhagavatam to get on you and stuff. You know? Yeah. Who loves Krishna more, Radharani or Chandravali? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he's saying at this point, if you look at it from a neutral position, you can see these hierarchies. But he said the best position for, is your position. In the drama, there's no small parts in the drama, just small actors. You know? So whatever you got to do is to rasa lila and you're a blade of grass, right? But everybody can see that the next moment Lalita is going to misplace her foot one ten thousandth of an inch and the entire thing is going to crash. And the only thing in the end that's going to save is just one blade of grass. <laughs> Gives, gives everything as God and saves the Rasli love. That's not a joke. That's, that's the way it is. Another time, time Sanatana Goswami says, every single cowherd boy thinks, I'm Krishna's closest friend. He's embarrassed. Why does he take me as his closest friend? Why does he talk to me about these things? You know, so many other boys love him more than me, you know. So Sanatana Goswami says, every, every cowherd boy thinks he's Krishna's closest friend. And he says, by the nature of the internal potency, it's a fact. It's a fact. So who does ISKCON depend upon? Who does the Sankirtan movement depend upon? <laughs> Me, us. It's a fact. It's a fact. You know, oh, I can. Other people will do it. There are better devotees. I can relax. You know? Yeah. No. In the end, it all. It's a very personal thing. That's not logical. Okay. Yeah. According to the logic of Euclid and so on. So, any comments or questions or anything else here? Any more stories about Jayananda stealing pants? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Bali Mordan. Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna, mate. Thank you for the enlightening class yeah. on the Rasajatra and so in the Sri uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita it is described that uh, during the Rathajatra pastimes, Lord Chaitanya dances in Jagannath Puri and sings some special prayers. Am I? Sing some special prayers Maybe to yeah. Lord Jagannath. Yeah. And uh, is it um, required for us to also f read or pray the same way Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recited that verses in Jagannath uh, Rathajatra in Is it required? Uh, is it required? Is it necessary no, or we're is it a good all, mode? Or? All, all that's required is you chant 16 rounds a day and follow the four principles. And you'll go to Vaikuntha. <laughs> yeah. Or else you'll get celestial sense gratitude. I've heard Prabhupada said most of the people I'm initiating are not going to go back to Godhead in this lifetime. Most of them will go to Indra Loka. I mean, how many people come and they chant? I see they come and they chant. It's not lost. It's there. They may, many times they come to a certain level and that's where they did it. And they're kind of stuck there. And maybe when they... You know, we take Vana, when they get older and leave, leave their sense gratification, they'll, we can revive, like a Prachetas. Oh, yeah, hey, you know, like that and stuff. But many, many people have come to this movement, so many. And they're not going back to Godhead, you know, but they're definitely going to go up and Iskan Indra Loka, or they'll take birth in our Guru Kul system. Yeah, you tell that to the GBC people, they get more enthusiastic about supporting the Ministry of Education. <laughs> so, not unlikely, you know, so you better make. Sure, Guru Kul system. So that's not a re re it's not a requirement. Prabhupada says uh, other sampradayas cannot appreciate the significance of Radha Kund, only followers of Lord Chaitanya. So Rath Yatra in the mood of Lord Chaitanya is, you know, other people worship B Vital, right? You know, and then other, other like Ran Chorji. And probably is you know intense, intense feelings, and then so on, which we don't understand really. Yeah. So it's not required, or exactly. What do you want? Hmm? You want to go to Vaikuntha? You want a new car? <laughs> you want impersonal liberation? <laughs> you want to embrace the breast of the heavenly nymph Urvasi? <laughs> yeah. You want to drink beer with Indra? Yeah. <laughs> this, this is... This is Prabodhananda Saraswati says, and Vrindavan Dhamma Himamrita, you can drink, drink nectar with Indra. Cheers, old boy. You know? The Brisbasis reject this. What is this? You know? 
Uh, you can embrace the breast of the heavenly nymph or Ravasi, you know. What is this? You know? Or you can merge into the unlimited bliss of the impersonal absolute truth. What is this? He says, the blades of grass in Vrindavan reject all these things. They spit on them. <laughs> wow. So what do you want? <laughs> Every day we get that question, right? Every day, what do you want? Yeah. Yeah. Is it required for you? Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm gonna, when somebody asked uh, Gorgobinda Maharaj, when Western questions, okay, when Western disciples said, said, uh, Maharaj, how can I get Krishna? And he said, oh, Baba, you want to get Krishna, Baba. You're going to suffer, Baba. Long time, Baba. <laughs> yeah. What do you want? Yeah. What do I want? Uh, whew, wow. Yeah. So I have questions or comments here. In Chile, this is a cultural thing I didn't know. Nobody asks a question. It's like some kind of thing. You can't ask a question for about like 20 seconds or 30 seconds. So I ask any questions. Nobody says anything. I, I kind of, well, maybe you should close this. No, wait, wait. <laughs> 30 seconds. <laughs> it's just, different people have different cultural standards. Yeah. What is she? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Nice mm -hmm. to see you and hear from you. Maharaj, I was just thinking about the comment that you just made about Indra Loka. Um, you know, we work so hard to make sure that we can go back and serve Krishna. It yeah. doesn't matter whether we go back to Krishna in this lifetime, but at least be born to again serve in Sankirtan mission. But it's very scary to hear that <laughs> when we don't do full, we go back to Indra Loka. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's so much more sense gratification there and, you know, it will pull us down and down. Everybody's and down. religious. Everybody has pearl japa beads like that. Yeah, everybody has, you know, marble <laughs> first-class deities from Majayapur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But every now and again, Bali Maharaj comes in and devastates the city and chases everybody out, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the whole Isopanishad, right? He prays at the end, even though I forget you, please, you don't you remember, you don't forget me. Okay, so we, with Bhagavatam, was, how many fall-downs are there in the Bhagavatam? You could just go through one after another, right? It's like, it's just like the whole, every, everybody. You know, sages of Naimish, Naimish Rani have a fall down. They're trying to do the wrong sacrifice. Vyasadeva has a fall down. It's just, you know, one after another, right? And then what's, what's the solution? And Krishna's usually sending somebody, you know, preaching. They get, sometimes they get rectified, and sometimes they don't. You know, it's just different, different things are happening, right? Yeah. So Krishna won't, for, won't forget us. You know, yeah. And wherever we go will be the right place for us. Yeah? Gopu Kumar made it to Vaikuntha. Okay. He was, and how old is Lakshmi in Vaikuntha? 16. Yeah, like that. Everybody's there. It's like, it's like when, 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 in high school, did you all have like a senior's day where they all took you off in buses to some park and you know, had a picnic and stuff like that? You had that? We had it yeah, every year. All the senior students would go off in some park and have a picnic and the teachers would be there. And it was like a nice time. But it was just like that. It's just like seniors, by Quint, it's like Seniors Day in, in, in Disneyland. <laughs> Nobody's over 16 years old. It's just like this. Everybody's young and, and having a good time and playing and building, building Vaikuntha with new kinds of rides and stuff. And Lakshmi, Lakshmi was treating Gopal Kumar like, like her, her, her son and stuff. And he was so happy there, you know. And one day, Narayan had gone someplace else, and Narada Muni came to Gopal Kumar and said, Lord Narayan, you know, says you should go on, right, to, to, uh, to Vrindavan, that's really where you belong, you know. And Gopal Kumar was saying, yes, I'm so happy here, but I still feel not completely at home, you know. And Narada Muni said, that's, you know, he knows that too, and he, he told me to tell you this when he wasn't here, because if you'd been here, you wouldn't have been able to leave. Very subtle point. You get so attached to this Aishwarya stuff, even though you know you should go on, you can't do it as long as you're getting that. So Krishna causes something. So he said, okay, I know I should go. So how do I get there? The Narada Muni said, well, you see the pathway over there? Yeah, that's the pathway you've got to take. And he said, okay. He said, he said, it goes to Ayodhya. And so Narada, and Gopal Kumar says, wait a second, you're saying, saying I'm going, I should go to um, uh, Vrindavan, but you're showing me the pathway to Ayodhya. The Narada Muni starts laughing, he said, that's the fastest way to get there. 
Yeah? So maybe if you end up in Iskan Indra Loka and distributing books, yeah, yeah, and you realize, yeah, this, yeah, yeah, this definitely. I always had these desires, and yeah, okay, and yeah, and we'll we'll finish them off now and stuff, you know, yeah, yeah, our subtle body, you know, so big. The other. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Other questions or comments? Yes. I wonder, what's What's the schedule? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Yeah. Ah. Yes. Speaking of the heavenly planets and the demigods oh. and their realms, wow. in the tenth canto, first chapter, ah. when Krishna tells Brahma that the demigods should come down and take. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Birth in the Yadra yeah. dynasty to yeah. assist him in his pastimes. Prabhupada yeah. writes yeah. how many devotees practice devotional service. Yeah, yeah. And then when it's not complete, they go to the higher planetary systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when Krishna comes and does his pastimes, he invites them to come down and join in his pastimes yeah. so that they can make further progress and well, get trained up and go back to Godhead. Fa face to face, yeah. yeah. So there's... Always some forward progress for the devotees. Wow. That they may go to the higher planetary systems, as Krishna says in the sixth chapter of the Gita, if it's not complete. Yeah. But then he has a plan how they're going to be engaged next to continue their progress. And so many times we kick and scream and don't want to go ahead with this change, and then we probably have to discover. Prabhupada said, Prabhupada said, right? His idea was first make money, then I can preach. And Krishna's idea was preach and the money will come. And Prabhupada said, it was an old argument between me and Krishna. <laughs> but he said, but finally Krishna won. I had nothing and all I could do was preach. And he said, and I see everything just came. Yeah, yeah, Acharya, yeah. And so many times I've seen that people just, you know, devotees were fighting like every single legal trick they could do to hang on to this restaurant in Cusco, in Peru, it's an incredible place. Every, you can just, and you can make the whole world Christian conscious from that place. All these tourists from all over the world come to Cusco as the head of the Inca Empire. Devotees, if you take some English language books there, they just, you become their friend forever because there's just so many people, you know. So it's a real nice place right in the middle there. And the owner wanted to sell it and this and that. And so they just were fighting against everything they could do. And finally they just lost. Within two weeks they were in a better restaurant, lower rent, one block away. <laughs> like that. It's like Krishna was just trying to make a better adjustment for us. You know, Hanuman, the same thing. Hanuman was crossing the ocean to Lanka, and this mountain came up, and he thought it was an obstacle. You know, but no, it was trying to offer him some place to rest and stuff. You know? The next one was a test from the demigods. Okay, you know? The third one was a real obstacle. You know? So many times these things were coming, we, we think they're obstacles and stop. You know? Yeah. Krishna, as long as you're chanting 16 nice rounds of following the four principles strictly, your life is, is being governed by Radharani, not by Durga. And then whatever happens to you, you just got to see, you know, how Krishna is arranging this. Yes. And don't forget, Krishna is a joker. Yes. Otherwise, why would there be zebras? Yeah? Are zebras a product of evolution? Right? They're camouflaged. Right? <laughs> Nobody can see me. <laughs> Once upon a time, the world was full of black and white vertical stripes. <laughs> somebody, okay. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Maharaj, someone was asking me a question this Sunday oh. uh, that what happens uh, to a person when, uh, let's say, from a human being, he came back to a chicken or a pig or a tree. Yeah. Then again, he has to go back to the 84 lakhs of species yeah. to come to human being. Means, suppose somebody falls down to any living beings within this creature, yeah. then he has to go through the again evolutions to come this one or... Um, no, Mar Mars Bharata became a deer, right? He didn't have to go through all the species. Here's one example. Yeah. In Prabhupada said, Bridge, we have people who are acting like pigs in Vrindavan, and they'll take one lifetime eating the stool. I guess it's personal. You know, I mean, they're, they're a pop, they're, the king makes impersonal laws, right? And they work, they, they help people. 
And if we follow them, the king is pleased. You know, karma bhya prarita hare priyataya vyaktim jag yogyani nas. So there are many impersonal laws and stuff. But as we begin to approach the king as, as a, an official, and it's not just not just following his laws, but we start to approach him as the king. And maybe we're on some you know committee working on uh, draining some swamp, and the king is there, and we relate to him as your your excellency and this and that. This is paramatma. You know? So once we get in contact with the Paramatma, then it's a different thing. Yeah? There, there are people there, anybody here a professional gambler? <laughs> don't be shy, don't be shy. We'll ask the truth here. But there are people, that's how they live. They are professional gamblers, and they're, they're good at it. They're good at the, the technical things, but they also, many are investigating, many times they are quite intuitive people. Some guys, I got, I got that feeling, and I know if I put everything I got on the next roll of the dice, I'm going to win. But I can't hold anything back. And Lady, Luck's going to, or Lady Luck won't be pleased with me. You put it on and you take the long chance. You know, and you win. Okay, I won $5,000, 2500 right away for poor people. Free hamburgers, free, free, free whiskey. <laughs> yeah, otherwise Lady Luck won't be pleased with me. And they, got it. they have a whole ethic and morality which is progressive, you know. And it, they can, they're in touch with the Paramatma, but they don't know what it is. Yeah, see, yeah. So the the laws of karma for them are just they're being, you know, they're being adjusted. The law is there, but you know, the, you know the king and stuff. You can, you know, you can write a letter or something. Okay. You know, yeah. But then we have personal relationship with the king, aren't you? you is your is your aunt named so and so? Yeah. Hey, we're cousins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come to lunch. Yeah. Then you know, then the karma is totally under the control of of the internal potency. Yeah? Okay. What are you worried about? What are you worried about? <laughs> because it's not about devotee, because Prabhupada, when he was going for a morning walk, when he see there are people who are surfing in the sea, he will say, oh, there are two atas, somebody say, oh, they may be you oh. know, inclined towards being a fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next time, somebody who is likely yeah. seeing a yeah, yeah. naked and then say, oh, they may go, you know, take bath as a tree. Tree, tree, yeah. So in those kind of categories, means they are not in a devotional path, but regular, they have yeah. attained their rare human birth in yeah. this life. But again, they let's say, because of their attachment to some kind yeah. of yeah. natural things, so they fall down. So now the question is, the karma is, doesn't apply to the yeah. other living beings. Car so how does the, they again go through the... It's complicated. Evolution. I mean, we run Bhagavad Gita, right? It says it's, 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 it's complicated. Yeah. Yeah. And you can, you can look at the laws, of the laws of the state of California. <laughs> it's like, yeah. What do you think the laws of the material world are? You know? You come to this, okay, you do something. Okay, you have to, for, for one lifetime. You know, somebody is a very good citizen, this and that, and the judge says, okay, you've got to do some public service for, for, for six weekends, you know. The second time, okay, something else, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's, there's different species and different reactions, and it says that, you know, describing what different reactions are, and you're taking it like that, and so on. Yeah. 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 So. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The microphone for the uh, public audience. Wow. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank yeah. you for wonderful class. Yeah. You mentioned Leela Smarana Swarup of Krishna, that it is in the form of recollection of uh, pastimes with Krishna. Uh, but then oftentimes Acharyas, when the conversation comes about Krishna left Vrindavan Vasis, then they say this very famous line, Vrindavanam Parityajya Padam Ekam Nagachami. I don't leave one step. So how do, you, how do we understand this? He met the Brajvasis even after he left, but they forgot because of Yogamaya or it was... Why is he saying, I'm not taking a step? No, because which is, which is the most intimate form? Yeah, because we, we think the form you can see is the most intimate form of Krishna. Lord Chaitanya is discussing with Sanatan Goswami and he goes through on the Swayam Prakash, Taratmika Prakash. I mean, Krishna expands himself to dance with the gopis in the Ras Lila. That's not the same as Krishna. Krishna in Dwarka doesn't have his flute, but it's not the same as Vaikuntha. And so all these forms. So the Lila Shmarna Swarup form is, is more intimate form. It's real, that's the whole point, it's a substantial form. 
But again, it's just like we don't want to eat one preparation of Sunday feast. You want some sweet, some salty, some chutney, and you mix them together and this and that and stuff. So all these different forms and stuff are blended together for different devotees in different ways. Um, Prabhupada says, let's see, uh, 7, 5, 23. Got that one? Was that verse? 7, 5, 23. Oh, my God, he's going on there. <laughs> This is an easy verse. Uh, two, two, two plus three is five. Page not fine. Oh, hi, you won't get it. You won't get it. I know you won't get it. Try seven, five, twenty-three, dash, twenty-five. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It'll take you forever. Control F, <laughs> control F, twenty-three, twenty-four. Uh, Shravanam kirtanam vishno smaranam pada sevanam. Yeah, yeah. Prahlad, two, two plus three is five. Two plus three is five. Seven, five, twenty-three. And there's a, probably gives a purport, right? Every single one of the, the processes, I think it's from some, something Bhakti Siddhanta wrote, every single process. So when it comes to the deity worship, Archanam, Prabhupada says, any, de, any, any grihasta with, with you know, opulent means, if he doesn't worship the deity, he's cent percent guaranteed to fall down. Yeah? So for grihasta, because the bodily concept is, is so strong, my wife, my father, my mother, my kids, my car, my house, my toothpaste, like, right? It's just, you have to do that to connect everything to a bodily, you know, connection like that. You can, whatever clothes you buy, you can bring them in front of the deity and you say, we, we bought these for your servants. And as soon as you do that, you may think, well, these are a little opulent for servants <laughs> and take them back. And as you do, as soon as you do, you think, well, no, this is not a servant. What Oh, okay, yeah. So every, every natural thing can be uh, then connected to the deity in Grihastha Ashram. But Prabhupada says, uh, how's it go? Balana karibe, ara balana paribe, Radha Krishna hridaye te sarvada sevibe. This is a sannyasi. Uh, he should not eat, eat opulent food or wear, wear opulent clothes, but always worship Radha Krishna as heart of hearts. Prabhupada says, a sannyasi is proud when he's always remembering Krishna within himself, yeah, yeah. And I was seeing that you, you uh, being in the sannyasa ashram, we was, wow, this is true, you know, so on, yeah. So sanya, a grihasta meditates on his car and his house, right? Yeah, a sannyasi meditates on his shoes and his luggage. <laughs> yeah, you want one pair of shoes which you can slip on and slip off easily. They'll be good in all kinds of weather, they'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> one, and say, I finally got them. They do everything. I want one bag, which will do, you know, you can carry on bag, but at the same time, you know, it's like, you know, yeah. So that there's much so different ashrams and different situations, different things are recommended. But it doesn't mean because sannyasi is maybe meditating on Krishna in his heart, all his activities, that it's any less than the grihasa is meditating on the external form. But we just combine them together, you know. But the Leela Shmarna Swarup was a very, very special, intimate, confidential form that Krishna gave to the, to the Brisbasis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Final questions? Yes, over there. Yes. Microphone. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Wow. Yes. It's always strange, you know. I, I, I see like Iskand, like Silicon Valley programs on television, you know. And you come, come here. Hey, you know uh, Basant Agrawal? Yeah, you ever seen him? Ever met meet him? Met him? He's, he does about Radha Raman Bhajans and stuff. Yeah. He was one of my heroes. I heard him over when we were over in the place over there. You know, I liked his kirtans, everything else. So funny, he came to uh, to Nashville and stuff. And I, I got I just mentioned him. All the devotees went to see him. It was it was a nice program, very heart touching. And they he chanted Prabhupada's name and everything else, and then the uh, Maha Mantra. But it was seeing him in person was this guy I always met and stuff. And he he actually smiled at me. <laughs> so, wow, different. And Krishna, you see him like that and stuff. You know, okay. But then you see him too much. You, you uh, what do you call it? Familiarity. Familiarity breeds contempt. You know. So it's a whole way to how it combine together these different forms of Krishna to, to stimulate ourselves. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. So yeah. just continuing on that, like you oh. mentioned about the more intimate form. So do we also understand it in this way that love and separation, it's more intimate? Yeah. Because the Rajvasis, they are separated yeah. from Krishna. So in uh, that way also. Namo Gora Kishwaraya Sakshad Vairagya Murtaye 
Vipralamba Rasam Bodhi Padam Bujaya Te Namaha. Yeah. So Ramananda Roy, this is one of our the Rupa Shiksha instructions to Rupa Goswami, chapter 19, Marjalila. You'll find it all over the place, just in the four natural verses in the Bhagavad Gita. That's one of the, it's a nice seminar. I gave a seminar on it one time. Such a nice thing, just isolated, talk about it, because you see it showing up every, again and again. Another one is, is Ramananda Roy. You know, Prabhupada, picked for, for uh, teachings of Lord Chaitanya, Prabhupada picked conversations with Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, Prakashananda Saraswati, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, and uh, Ramananda Roy. Yeah, yeah. When, it, when Sanyasi, Gaudiya Maas Sanyasi was criticizing, you know, our, our, our disciples and what is Prabhupada giving you all and that, well, he's, you know, you haven't got Chaitanya charge from me. Oh, well, Prabhupada gave us, you know, Chaitanya charge. What's in it? He told him what was in it. The, 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 the Sanyasi said, wow, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. So Ramananda Roy is, he goes to his higher levels and he comes to the love of the gopis and the love of Radharani and he said, there's something higher. You know, what is that? That's Radharani's feelings of separation. But it has to be combined with meeting, otherwise there's no meaning to separation, right? <laughs> the meeting and the separation are combined together tastefully. Then, then Ramananda Roy said, there's something higher than that. And Lord Chaitanya covered his mouth. <laughs> so, so, hmm? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, vipralamba, yeah, is seva. Yeah, yeah. Usually, was it Guru Kripa said we're usually feeling separation from Mahaprasadam, <laughs> like that. Yeah. My separation, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it's not. It's not impossible. You know, we can maybe we're you know a doshada, sadhu sangha, bhajana kriya. You know, I was thinking it's not like these boxes. You know, you're one or the other. It's like a German idea. Then Gor Govindamar is saying the same thing. No, you're. Maybe you're, you're, you're always chanting your rounds, you're always getting up, Mongol Artik, you're always doing some preaching Sankirtan, you got your place, you know, Nishta, you're fixed. Um, Shimbata, no, is it goes, Nasta Prayashu, Abhadreshu, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhagavati Uttama Sloki, Bhakti Bhavata Naistiki. Naistiki. Prabhupada said means this means Nishta, fixed. Not that, it's not that you chant your rounds sometimes and not other times. He said this is more or less 75% Krishna conscious, you know, Nishta. If you're always chanting your rounds fixed, you know, and of course you do that, you got to be other things too. You know? So, okay, I'm on the platform of Nishta, but sometimes, every couple of years, I really have just fundamental doubts in my faith. Am I just a brainwashed idiot or something? You know? And sometimes, every couple of years, I experience prema. Some moment, you know, something happens and it's like that and so on. Yeah, so we... We're getting getting these experiences. You know. It's not no, just, no. You can't experience it. No, you experience them. Yeah, yeah. So, be pralamba seva. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Another. I guess we're getting here. Here it is. Anything else? Any truck drivers have any questions? Oh my gosh, it's hard to beat Banana King Louis. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? So many, you know, experiences. That's nice. It's the same thing, you know, remembering him. Um, hey, one time, this is so many, so many you know. Um, some, you know, 455 Valencia Street, right next to it. Was, it used to be a mortuary. The place was a mortuary. And uh, up, up, where, up where we used to cut the subji, the floor was kind of like this. And behind the kitchen, there's a drain. That's where they used to drain the body out, blood out of the dead bodies and stuff. And that place was haunted. I mean, it was they've always had direct experiences of doors closing with nobody there. And you know, anyway, it was an interesting place. You know. So uh, some of the devotees were living maybe like about three blocks from there, and their landlord in the patio area had this big apple tree, you know, and he wasn't doing anything with it. With it. So he asked the uh, landlord if we could come and get the apples, and he said, "Yeah, you know, okay." So Jayananda, um, went, went, well, that's maybe four or five brahmacharis, and we went over with some boxes, and we started picking these apples, and the guy came down, and he, went, and he made the mistake of talking to Jayananda about anything. <laughs> and after some time, his kids came down, and they wanted to go back and see the Hare Krishna temple. It's an Indian temple, and all these strange gods, or, you know, whatever gods are there, my grandma, grandfather used to say, and, you know, wow, oh, okay, you know. So the kids said, well, can we go back? He said, well, okay, but you go with this guy, Jay, you go with him. Okay, yeah. So his kids went there. 
Then, then they were helping to okay, peel the apples, and then they helped make, cook the Sunday feast, and they kept calling their father, they said, well, okay. And they stayed the entire day and went, went home that night with prasadam and everything else, you know? Yeah. Which reminds me then of Ricardo. When we were making these wheels, these wheels were kind of like Gatachak's chariot or something. It was gigantic pipes this big and everything else. We had to roll them in place to put them on the cart because the wooden wheels would break. And we were sitting there terrified they'd fall on us or something. It was just like, you know, giant Andre always, always had these things where something, you know, I had to pray to God for something. Oh, God, like that, you know. So the guy who was helping it was this guy named Ricardo. He was a Mexican guy, welder. And we had a big industrial garage next to the temple. It was big enough for two full-size buses to go inside. So he was coming and helping, and Jayananda was paying him. So one Friday night, he came by the temple, and uh, I was there, and we were kind of working on this prasadam cart, you know, thing. And he was all dressed up and smelled good, and it was Friday night in the mission district. You know, he was, you know, so he was going to come to get his money. And Jayananda said, oh, Ricardo, I'll tell you can, you, can you help me on this one weld before you go? I got your money, you know. You're, you're a professional. I don't know how to do that. So about three hours later, <laughs> Ricardo was still there, jacket off. You know, and he just, you know, and John Anders said, oh my God, I ruined your whole night and everything else. And he, he said, no, he said, all I would have gone is gone out, wait, spent all the money, got drunk, my mother would have gone home, my mother would have beat me and stuff, and now I got the money and I had a, had a good time with you all here, and I hope you have a good day tomorrow and stuff, you know. But that was this, well, Jayananda, you just, everybody, he would engage them in, in devotional service like that and so on. Okay, yeah. Maharaj, you travel all over the world, and well, you've dedicated your whole life to Krishna consciousness. And then when you come here, he's going to ask for something. We now. see, the, <laughs> we see the the image of dedication, okay. and we also uh, get from you your constant absorption in in studying Srila Prabhupada's books, mm. and your appreci deep appreciation of devotees yeah. and devotional service. Yeah. So we're de deeply grateful oh. that you come back to your home here at ISV, or one of the founders of this temple, and huh. this is, as far as I know, it's still your home base. Yeah. So please, all of us, uh, let's welcome back yeah. His Holiness, Hanumat Prashek Swami. Sometimes in the Bhagavatam, in the eighth canto, all the uh, Prajapadis are glorifying Lord Shiva, right? And they say, you say, not even Lord Vishnu can understand your glories. It says it right there. It's because of the Prajapadis, and they're looking at the Vaisha of Lord Shiva, which is Vishnu. So all you're seeing in me is simply Srila Prabhupada's mercy. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. only does Hanumat Prashek Swami ki. Oh. And now we're going to have an artik ceremony, so we'll stand up and put away all the asanas and uh, make room to dance. Hare Krishna. Gaur Pray Manande. Hare Bhav.